This is JP Smith from Boxing Luton, and I am here at Ringcraft Boxing Gym with the head honcho to gaffer, Mr. Liam Conroy. How are you, Liam? Not too bad, mate. You good? Yeah, fantastic, man. It's uh, it's nice catching up with you for. Uh, well, we see each other a lot again, and uh, but we never actually get a chance to stand up and have an interview, do we? Yeah, always too busy. <laughs> oh, <it's> too busy. <laughs> I'm busy, or you're busy, one or the other. <laughs> and uh, so, how are things going at the moment, mate? Things are going good. Things are going good. It's been a good year for us overall, I think. Um, White collar scene, we just smashed it again. Um, majority wins, I'd say 80% of it, 80% wins. Um, amateurs coming along, we've got some good ones coming through now. Mm. Um, up and down, we've got winners, and we've had winners and losers, but as you do with amateurs, just starting out, and we're quite new to it as well. Yeah. Um, and pros, I've got a few. I've got. I had. I had five pros. I've got three now. Um, so uh, Jules Phillips is retired now. So he um, he said he's he, he's he's got baby on the way, and he's not. He can't commit to it as much as anymore to put it to put it that way sort of thing. So but I've got Ian Morelli. He's just turning over in a minute. He had a few problems with his medicals, but that's going through now. And he's he's matched now for um, the 21st of February on a Goodwin show. What's Ian's background then? Ian's background is he boxed for MK Academy um, under England Boxing. He had 14 amateur fights, one eight. Yeah. Very very strong kid. Um, he's not super technical, but he's strong. He's fit and he's committed to it. He spent a lot of money to get through his medicals. So just to give you an idea, he had the what they have that you have your first brain scan and then you have an annual one every year for a pro. So he on his brain scan they found an abnormality. So to do that they offered it. He had to pay for another scan which cost him another six hundred pound to have a certain part of his brain scanned. And then after that he had to get a specialist to look at that. So uh, medical should have cost him seven eight hundred quid. Cost him nearly two grand. But he stuck with it and he wouldn't give in and now he should be cleared now, ready for the new year. He sounds incredibly determined. He's determined and he's very strong. So um, he's very tough and he's very strong. He's ideal journeyman. Ideal. Um, and what weight will he be fighting now? He will do, uh, he's looking to do probably 11.6 up to 11.10. He's never gone that light, but he's going to get down to it. So he will do with the training we're doing and he's eating right. So. Um, so he's matched already for the 21st. Then we've got Lee Devine. Yeah. He came to me through Jules. I've known Lee for a couple of years. He was doing white collar before and he had amateur before that. He's had four fights now. He had three fights in four weeks. Last one being Saturday, just gone. Um, he's developing as, as, as a road fighter journeyman. Um, he's starting to develop his little style now. Been in with some good kids as well. So he, he ain't had it easy so far. But he's booked out now three times in March. So obviously he's getting a good name, reliable. So. He's booked out on the 7th, the 14th, and the 21st on Goodwin shows. And then I've also got Callum Hyde. Uh, Callum Hyde was with Kieran Farrell. He's now with Steve Goodwin and with me. Um, and he, he had about nine months out, come back. He's had uh, three back, I think, with us. He just renewed his medicals as well. So he will be fighting. First one is on the 21st as well. So he's got three lads on that night. So that's the pro side of things anyway. So that, I mean, that there, I mean, you know too well, just reminds you just how important journeymen are. Yeah, they? yeah, exactly. So, like, when we, we had one fight with, um, oh, his name's coming out of my head now, one of Xavier Miller's boys on the uh, Ultimate Fighter. Yes. They couldn't get, they couldn't get no one else. So, Lee took it as his debut, um, and he got stopped. So, he got stopped, but he learned from that stoppage, you know what I mean? He, he ate too much food before he went in the ring, he said he get. Yeah. Come back, and there's rappers everywhere on the floor. So what's that? <laughs> That's a furry bar. That's a fair. So no, I mean, what the fuck are you eating it all for? <laughs> I said, I bet he gets stopped on a body shot. And he got stopped on a body yeah. shot. But he's learning his own little thing as he goes through now, you yeah. know? So he knows what to eat and what to do now. He makes the weight lovely. You've seen him yourself. He's chiseled for a 37 year old man. He's, he's chiseled. He, look, he looks like a prospect, you know? Yeah. So he'll develop as he goes, as he goes through. So um, Callum's experience, as you know, Callum's had 30 fights now nearly. Um, um, Ian, I think, will do well on the road. So, so Lee, that. you said, have actually gone through the motions of being white collar and then going amateur, and that's something that some of your fighters have done this year as well, isn't it? Yeah, so Lee, went, Lee was amateur when he was younger, then he had a couple of white collar, and then we turned him over pro. Ian's come straight from the amateur scene, yeah. fresh from the amateur scene, actually. When he first started his medical thing before he got the, the problem with the brain scan, he had only had a fight a couple of months before, so he got he got his um, he got his license um, approved straight away at the meeting. Yeah. Whereas Lee had to go through the um, the uh, uh, assessment process. Yeah. So he had to go through the assessment process. And um, you've had at least two fighters this year who've moved from white collar over to the amateur, in Lias and Ben. Yeah, sorry, Lias and Ben. Yeah. So Lias came to me. He was training with another fella um, and over in um, in Hitchin. And he came to us and he's had, 
He had five or six white collar and he's gone to amateur now as well. He had four fights in four weeks. So lost his first two, won his second two, and then was in the uh, national championship semi-finals the other week. And um, just got outgunned. He just, he just, he just, he didn't perform to his full ability and the other lad just stayed on the back foot and just boxed him long and moved. So, but he's developing, you know, Elias himself, he's committed, he's a good boy. And he learned from that. He learned from that. And then obviously Ben, Ben, Ben's gone from the unlicensed to, 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 to the amateur as well now. Um, poor old Ben's had three loss three, but he's had some, he's had some tough fights to be fair to him, you know. Yeah. But he's going to go down in weight now. They're both dropping in weight. Okay. So, Elias was fighting at 69 to 70 kilos. So that's a 71 kilo for championships. He's dropping now to 67 kilos for championship weight. And Ben is dropping from 66 down to 63. So how much of a difference does that make to a fighter? I mean, it's three kilos doesn't sound like a lot, only about that's six, six pounds, seven pounds. nearly half a stone, 6.6 pounds, isn't it? So it's nearly half a stone. Mm -hmm. uh, for Lies, I think it'll make a big difference, and for Ben, because you know Ben's big, tall and skinny, you know? Yeah. Um, and the lads were quite strong at his weight. Uh, for Lies, it'll be the same thing. Lies, Lies, Lies is, is in shape, but like when Lies saw a couple of the other lads weighing in, he was like, I can get more off me. He's not right. chiselled. So he said once he gets chiselled, he'll know he's at his good weight, do you know what I mean? So, and he'll be strong at that weight, Lias, because he, he, he is strong. I think they're both adapting. See, the unlicensed is a bit more like the amateur, a little bit like pro, it's a bit more slower, a bit more, you pick your shots and you work through the rounds, you know? Whereas they've come into the amateur thing, it's very quick. A lot of the boys are quick and it's about scoring points, not so much about power. So they're adapting well, so next year, hopefully they'll have a good year, both of them. And you've developed a relationship a bit more with the high boxing concept, haven't you? Because you've had a lot of fighters out on that, and that's kind of the unlicensed. Yeah, we're, we, that's our main show that we deal with is high box, Davey and Nicky over there, because they're good to us. Um, the boys get a good commission off their tickets, and we take any fight. We don't, we don't really, we don't really, we don't have journeymen. Well, we do have journeymen to a certain extent. Ross has boxed three lads. You could call them journeymen because they're just turning up and fighting, but they're coming to take his head off. They're challenging yeah. him. The last lad he had was a late replacement, um, Adam Steele, I think it is. Really, really tough kid. Gave Ross all sorts of problems, but Ross dropped him, beaten by a point. So, and I've watched it back. They, a couple of his mates said he won it, but you watch it back properly. He was catching Ross in arms and gloves, but Ross was scoring the cleanest shots, and obviously he dropped him. So, yeah, Ross is uh, Ross is ten and zero now. As you were at his fight, I really? yeah. interviewed him. Yeah. On the eye box, I think it's seven fights down the eye box. Won them all. Stopped three. He won the prize fighter championship first. Then he won the. Uh, they, the the guy that was supposed to fight him in English wouldn't fight him, so he, he went in and he fought uh, for, the, for the area title, sorry. So he went and fought for their version of an English title, which is like basically a level up, say the level two belt. Then he dropped back down to fight for the area title and someone challenged him and he beat him as well. Yeah. And then uh, another lad has now challenged him now for February, so he'll fight again in February. So he should go 11-0 and again in February. Uh, that's on the 29th, isn't 29th it? 29th of February, yeah. Well, what's great is that it seems like they're recognising your input as well and what the fighters you're putting across because you're up for some awards now at the moment, Yeah, so we're you? going to the awards night on Saturday night, this Saturday. Um, we're up for gym of the year. I'm up for trainer of the year. Ross is up for fighter of the year and fight of the year. And Ben is up for most improved. So we're up for a few of them, like, you know. So slowly getting recognised, I think. We're working our way through. Well, you got a little bit of recognition yourself uh, recently, weren't you? Because you were voted um, uh, you were voted role model of the year at the Houghton Regis and Dunstable Awards, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, the community awards. Yeah, voted for by the community. So we was nominated. Apparently, it was nominated by five different people. Yeah. So it was nice to hear that, and they said nice words. They had to write a little thing about you as well, and they you were there. They read it out. Yeah, it was thing. great. It was quite wasn't nice it? what they wrote as well. So yeah. um, slowly, um, still having problems like. With, Still battling with the council, trying to get. We can have one of their buildings, but they want us to pay to go in rate. So we're still trying to negotiate with them. There's not really every other town and every other club I speak to, like in the, in the local areas, they're on peppercorn rates. Except for like Luton Town Box Club. Now, obviously, they've got their own gym. They're a bit like me. They've got paid the bills, but yeah, a lot, a lot of places do get peppercorn rates. You know, you, you don't or reduced rate. But we're not, we're not getting no help off Dunstable at the minute. So, but we're still battling. We're still battling away. Um. I mean, actually, my, my uh, son's local Beavers Club that he goes to, they had they were getting peppercorn rates, and then the council said that they wanted a hell of a lot of money out of them. Yep, and a, a big few, chunk of money up front, so yep, it's and a few crazy. Clubs have had it. Uh, Paddy Locker over at Helmholtz Hempstead just had the same thing. They come in and said to him, uh, you're not going to get peppercorn anymore, you need to register. What they're trying to do now, the old way of the amateur clubs, you used to just be an amateur club, and that was it. Yeah. A lot of the local authorities now want you to be registered as something with company's house. So, like, you can go as a kit company, uh, uh, um, uh, I thought it was called Charity Something Company, or what we've gone is not community investment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Community, community interest company. That's it. Community interest. Yeah, or well, you can go charity. Charity is a hard route to go down. 
Um, there's a lot more to it. We've gone as a non-profit making limited company. Yeah. So that then entitles us to apply for certain grants and stuff like that. So, but yeah, but I know Paddy Lockman over at Hemel. Hemel have turned turned it the other way now. One of the councils got involved. They had it building for years, and they're actually getting still getting peppercorn rates. That's great. So there's there's a few of them like that, you know. So we have been approached by Free Counties Radio actually to go onto their show and discuss all this on there with them and kind of put the council on the line. But at the minute, we're trying to just do it amicably with them. So yeah, I mean, you know my thoughts on that, and yeah, yeah. as much publicity as possible, yeah, get it out there. Exactly. Let's shout so the louder, louder, yeah, louder, louder. If we don't get any further with them, then we will be going down that road. But we're yeah. going to speak to Andrew Salus as well, who's our local MP, because obviously they just won the election. So hopefully he'll still be in power. He'll still be the local bloke, because he's supposed to be a brilliant guy to speak to for stuff like that. And don't forget, he was one of the judges who voted exactly. you role model of the year, Liam. I think I'll be saying to him as well. So. <laughs> that was me up on stage, tell him. Yeah, huh? They tell him that was yeah, you up exactly, in stage. Yeah, it was him and him and one of the councils, wasn't it? So yeah. we we were approached by Todden Council, Todden Parish Council, were a small little council, small little place, as you know. Sure. They offered us a building up there uh, at Peppercorn rates, probably hundred pound a year. The building's probably not much bigger than what I've got here, yeah. but the building needs a lot of work. But they were willing to give me. They they they're actually they're actually supposed to be knocking that building down. If I want it, I can have it, and yeah. they're willing to help me out with a little bit of the financial side. But it's just it'd be a lot to take on, and it's not it's away from Dunstable, and that's not what I want. Mm. So. I mean, I've spoken to you recently about a little piece I'm writing about county lines and stuff, and one of the parts of that will be just breaking down some of the costs that are involved to yeah. councils and police, to everything, by some of the stuff that's going on. And what they could give in to a boxing gym would be absolutely dwarfed mm. by what they're spending on things like, you know, social care, the cost of police looking for missing children. Yeah. We know how many missing children there are at the yeah. moment. Every day there's something different. The cost of moving children around, moving families out of the area. It's absolutely crazy some of the things that's being spent by local councils. And that money, some of that money could be there to get kids off the streets. Yeah. We, 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 when we had a meeting with the council, we had a meeting with, with one of the funding people to speak to him about the funding that's there and we were talking to him about, um, uh, as I think it's called asset funding, it's like the local, any local build construction that's going on, it goes into a fund, I've forgotten the name of it now, and uh, we, we asked for that and we actually took a file there with a breakdown of how in other areas where they've introduced boxing gyms and, and community and what we, yeah. we were, I was going to box gym to stroke community hub, that's what we were trying to build in that bigger unit. And we, sh- we, we actually done a, gave them links to reports that were done by one of the top police officers in this country showing how much it reduced that crime in that area. Yeah. And we actually gave them the statistics for this area, for the knife crimes and the violence and this, that and the other, and how we believed we could do it. Martin Fieldbold helped me write, uh, as you know, good yeah, for that. Yeah, fantastic. Helped me man, write, Martin. he read it, he wrote, it's a lovely piece. Uh, I took, I got all the kids in here, their parents do um, case studies on their kid. Yeah. And one of them mentioned about boxing, they all mentioned about how their behavior had improved. We got a couple of, Really, uh, we've got ADHD kids in here, a couple with um, uh, autism as well, and they've they developed and they've got better. We've got some here of anxiety, we've had adults in here with depression. All that was in a big folder, and they never even opened it. It was sat on the desk, I went to give it to them, and said, Oh no, we'll just chat. So that was a bit gutting for us because we were told before we went there we'd probably get a bit of help. But it's time for change, isn't it? It's time for change. I think, it, I think what it is, it's not all their fault, the people above them. Sure. There's only a certain amount of resources they've got. Dunce one out in small places especially like we've, we spoke to Central Beds and Dunstable Council. We know you've seen, I've dug them out on social media. Yeah. Then all of a sudden they ring me. Um, certain councils have rang me and said, we'd love to help you, Liam. We love what you're doing, but there's only so much we can do and our hands are tied by what we can do. So, yeah. um, they've got they've just released another funding thing. I think, it, it's listen, it's a great thing if you can raise money. They're doing a, what's called a uh, match funding thing they just brought out. It's a new project. You can have up to £25,000. But to get that money, you've got to raise money first and it can't just right. be by a sponsor, it has to be by an activity or fundraising. Okay. So, I mean, that's another thing you've got to look into, but it takes money to make money sometimes, not me yeah. as well. So, where I think they should be giving out a bit more money to these community projects, you know what I mean? As you know, I've put over £30,000 into this place. We've got a van out there on finance for driving the kids around, it's a constant go, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, a little bit, a little bit back would be nice, but that's not why we started it. We started it to help kids out, and it's working. You see the amount of kids we have in here, so. Absolutely, yeah. it's quite well packed in here tonight and it's coming up to Christmas, isn't it? A good session. There's loads of them in here that won't never box in a million days of Sundays, but they love coming here, they love training. We had them blind, blind, uh, blind, blind, blindfold boxing tonight, bunching <laughs> lumps out of each other. <laughs> Probably breaks every rule in the book. Kids <laughs> so, have a lot of fun. I'll post the videos later, don't worry. <laughs> Anyone wants to sue me, I've got insurance, don't worry. <laughs> So what would you like to see in 2020? What would you love? To, what was? What would be a good 2020 for you? Any our ambitions tw- for it? Our goals are 20. I mean, we've got good people around us now. One of my girls, one of my boxers, Simon McConnell, her dad's 
kind of took over the funding range. He's, he's applying to all different places. That's great. Because he used to work for one of the banks and it was partly what part of his job. Tanya, obviously my missus, as you know, my wife, she's on the case as well with a couple of other little projects we're trying to do. So for us really, it's to get out of this place, get into a bigger place. We have got a place lined up, as I said to you, the old Carl Hoysville Road. Um, and just develop more, you know, we'll just start working with the schools, start working, we'll, we want to start working with the police. I've spoke to one of the police people because the Beverage Police Trust gave us a thousand pound as well. So they said if I could produce case studies to them and uh, files and stuff like that, studies, like university studies, whatever, on how boxing helps, they're, they're willing to maybe get us to help with the probation and stuff like that. Yeah. We've got another fellow now um, who's uh, involved with the prisons, uh, release people when they're getting released from yeah. prison back into society, uh, giving them a focus and stuff. So we might be trying to get involved with that. So really going forward, a better gym, so we can take more people on, more kids on, so kind of at capacity, um, do more with the community. So like develop the gym into a hub more than just a gym, you know? Yeah. So like yourself now, like from your background with finance, and you said you'd come in and speak to, because it's in the middle of a council state. So they, everyone's got problems with finance. We'll have one night a week where someone comes in like yourself and speaks to them and no gets problem. advice on where they can go. I want to get a youth worker in once a week. So if any of the kids have got problems, they can speak to them. So, because that was one of the things I said to the council. They said, well, you're not qualified. I said, yeah, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get professionals. With somebody else to do it. Mean? Yeah, yeah. I'll be there to listen, but then I'll guide them to the right people. I mean, so, the fact that you're even thinking about those things says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, well, just think, um, and as you know, we don't we don't make money here. We just about break even. We only charge kids three pound each. You know what I mean? It's not like we're charging loads of money, and the kids ain't got the money. I don't even charge them. So I'll never be rich, that's for certain. <laughs> so really, new gym, probably a few more pros as well. Um, get the amateurs up to a bit more, bit, bit, bit more developed. Uh, we've got more space; it'd be a lot easier. So I have got. I've got Michael Regan here now and, and Muhib Khan here. Muhib's not well at the minute, but he's here. So we've got three coaches here now as well. So just need the space so we can spread out and do yeah, some Yeah, pushing work. on. Yeah. So really, Jim, a few more pros, um, and just keep keep building, really. So, well, listen, Liam, thanks a million for talking to Boxing Luton. Can't wait out. to uh, look forward to next year, mate. Thank right, you. Cheers, mate. Take care.